many scientists have said, and there's tons of information out there, but genetically modified organisms are, are, are said to be a, a more serious threat to mankind than even like nuclear war. Mm, yeah. Because it's kind of like an inner nuclear war, if you will. It's causing all kinds of problems um, in, 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 our, in our body chemistries. A lot of this stuff is only approved because and of lobbying say. done by the pharmaceutical companies. Uh, people need to know that either the creator got it right or the creator got it wrong. The problem is when you're devoid of any spirituality that encompasses like the planet Earth in a holistic way, you're able to now take a little piece of this and a little piece of that and try to do better than the creator. I don't think that's a smart position to be in. I think the creator got it right and we need to leave it alone. Um, splicing genes from a codfish into corn to make that corn tolerate cooler soil conditions so that the growers can now plant earlier and have a longer growing season and increase the yield, therefore increasing the profits for the corporations that own the seeds and are patenting life and causing all kinds of abnormalities in people is not smart. So we, we don't support GMO. I only use organic, certified organic seeds. We save our own seeds from season to season. And I just don't trust a lot of seed companies. I, I, I certainly will not buy them. And I don't want to eat any genetically modified food. So you've got to be very careful. Because most, 70% of everything you eat is genetically modified these days. No. It's sad. You know, you can take genes from inner species, like they take a, a spider gene and put it into the dairy goats to make the milk, to make the calvar, to make the bulletproof vest. And a lot of people don't know that. But you see, they take that gene because the spiders and they make this web that's a very light, but it's very tough. And now they put it into the goat's milk and then they can make bulletproof vests, spin it down and do stuff with it. Crazy stuff in a lab. So we got a lot of problems now. People saying they have celiac disease and they're sensitive to this, and they're sensitive to that. A lot of it is due to the GMO factors that's been designed into this food and um, the chemical reactions that that happen as a result of that because our bodies were not designed to run off of that type of fuel. It'd be the same as taking, you know, kerosene and putting it into, you know, uh, a Mercedes and expecting it to run correctly. It's not going to. It wasn't designed to run on that fuel. Yeah. We're not built for that either. And for those of us who are melanated people, we really have to be very conscious about what we're eating. All people should be. But I think that we have some other sensitivities as, as, um, as melanated people that we know that we need food that is very high in the energy from the sun. And we should be eating a wide variety of, of fruits and vegetables that are highly colored. Purples and reds and dark greens and yellows and oranges. We, we, we need that palette of color in, in our diet in order to balance us out. And the more that you get away from that and just started eating, you know, like things that are denatured, uh, that are um, white, that basically the nutrition has been taken out of them and they're not going to help you at all. Not, not at all. You know, it's, it's kind of crazy when you think about it that people <clears throat> have been misinformed for so long will say things like, you know, well, make, milk makes the body strong. I remember, you know, as a child, I never liked milk. And in fact, you know, I, I, I know now that I was allergic to it. We grew up drinking cow's milk. And I always had problems with my sinuses and congestion and skin dis disorders and until I got old enough to begin to read and began to think on my own. It's quite obvious that nature provides milk, the female of the species, and mammals, in the order of mammals, will create milk, produce milk for its young, for its young. Therefore, if it is true that cow's milk is good for a human, then the reciprocal of that should be that human's milk would be equally good for a cow. Yet nobody thinks about that. But it's like the law of reciprocity, you know, if, it's, if one plus one equals two, then one plus one will continue to equal two. But if you take that cow's milk and feed it to a human, and the human is supposed to do so great on that, wouldn't it therefore be logical that human females should be nursing calves? But yet I know of no women who will suckle a calf and no women who collect their milk, their breast milk, to feed it to cows. So why don't we do that? If cows make us so good for people, why isn't people's milk so good for cows? doesn't make sense you know dogs lactate and make milk for puppies cats lactate make milk for kittens goats lactate make 
milk for goats, cows lactate, and guess what? They make milk for cows. Human females lactate and make milk for their human offspring, their children. That's nature's way. So everybody got this thing twisted because somebody way back when decided that a cow was a better surrogate mother for their children than their birth mother. It's really crazy, you know? And so you know it's really crazy because I know of no human females who have ever nursed a calf. <laughs> Makes no sense. Here in this country the way we're going because we, we're not owning, we own less land now than we did in 1935. So that's a backwards move. So all of the youth growing up now are not even going to have a chance because their grandparents are not going to have any piece of land for them to even relate to. So they, they only know concrete. And that's, that's not good. The future is agrarian and going to nature. The future has always been, should have been, and always really has been natural based. Yeah. The further you get away from that, the more problems you're going to have in your society. And that's, that's where we are now. We have a tremendous amount of problems. Because we've lost our natural minds and we're not close to nature, so we become, become vitamin D deficient, we become uh, ADHD, all that kind of stuff. Because what are we tuned into? When they do bring children out here, especially teens, they really don't have um, the mind to last more than 10 minutes or so. Do you have a signal out here? And I said, I got all kinds of signals out here. And then now the question is, where's the closest mall? Yeah. So this is the, this is the honest to God truth. They bought some teenagers... They were 16 years old from high school in Richmond. Uh, one of the professors from Virginia State University bought a van load of them out here, uh, say about 12 of them. And I was talking about my goats and explaining that there's different breeds of goats. And they're like, really? And I'm like, sure, just like there's different breeds of dogs, there's different breeds of goats. And I said, and I said do you realize that there's, there's also different breeds of pigs? And they said, what? You know, I said, well, can anybody name a breed of pig? And one girl put her hand up. And I said, yes, young lady. She says, guinea. Guinea pig. That's not really what I was talking about. I'm talking about pigs as in porcine, and you're talking about something totally different. I said, but the truth is there really is a breed of hog called guinea hog, but the guinea pig that you're talking about is not really a pig at all, and I would hope that you knew that. Young man was 16 years old. He was afraid of a rooster. We had a rooster walking around at that time. He kept saying, ooh, why does he keep looking at me like that? Why does he keep looking at me like that? I said, probably because you ate up his mama and his daddy and his brothers and sisters. And he's keeping an eye on you to make sure you don't eat him. And he's like, oh, but I'm scared. He was scared of the rooster. He's 16. He's scared of a chicken. Ooh. We got some fixing to do, but I think we need a couple of generations that are not raised on, on concrete. You know, we know that animals raised on concrete causes problems. I say people raised on concrete causes problems in people, too. Mm -hmm. And we're just not basically making that connection. But mm -hmm. people raised on concrete have the same kind of problems that animals raised on concrete have. It's not good for their health. Some kind of way, we, we need a, a major dose of nature to bring our natural minds back to vibrating like they should so we can embrace nature and embrace life appreciate life on a different level. That'll stop a whole bunch of senseless killing. It'll bring back families. There's a nuclear unit. Mm 